What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you are doing well. Stefan here from App Stuff, and in today's video, we're gonna be covering the difference between state objects and observed objects. This is a question I get all the time, and we're gonna clear up any confusion you have about those two in this video. So let's go ahead and get started right now. So to start things off, guys, we're going to talk about how view models work in Swift UI. Before we can understand the difference between state and observed objects, we first need to understand how observable objects work and how view models work in general with Swift UI. Then we can start to cover the differences between the two things. So let's take a look at this diagram that explains the relationship between views and view models. We don't really care about models in this thing. We don't need to look at the full scope of the MVVM architecture, simply just how views and view models work together for the purpose of this example. So we can see that view models are responsible for notifying the view to update the user interface. And it does th so through conforming to this observable object protocol, and it uses published properties, which ultimately notify the view to reconfigure itself. So if we look at the relationship between the two things, we see that the view model, notify, the view model notifies and updates the view, and the view simply observes the view model. So it's observing the view model, and it does so through use of state object or observed objects. When changes happen on the view model, the view reconfigures itself with the updated data. So that's a really simple breakdown of how views and view models work together. Basically, the view model has our data that the view needs, and when that data changes or gets updated or deleted or whatever it may be, it notifies the view to reconfigure or redraw itself with the updated data. Now, it's very similar to how state properties work with views. So if you guys are confused as to how state properties and binding properties work together, I highly recommend checking that video out on my channel. It's available in the description. I have the link there. Make sure you check that out because this definitely builds on top of that. It's very important to understand state and binding properties before we can understand state objects and observed objects. So once again, the link's in the description um, for that video. Highly recommend checking that out. Um, but anyway, guys, let's go ahead and see if we can implement a simple example of a view-view model relationship where the view model is responsible for updating the view with data. So let's go ahead and hop into Xcode now. So I have a Xcode project opened up here, guys. You should do the same. And it's the Xcode project from the state versus binding video. You're not gonna need any code from that video. You can start fresh with a new project if you like, but this stuff is very closely related, so I'm putting it all together in one project. So really quickly, we're just gonna implement a simple counter. And we are going to just be able to increment the counter by one when we press a button. So let's go ahead and do that and also make sure we implement the use of a view model to help us out. So we're going to say we want a VStack text count, and it's just going to be zero for now. And then we are going to create a button, and it's going to say increase count, and we'll leave the action blank for now. Let's go ahead and just create a view model really quickly. So we're going to say class counter view model. It's gonna to conform to this observable object guy. And then we are going to make a published property for our count, set it equal to zero. And we're gonna write a function here called increase count and say count plus equals one. And then down here, guys, in our struct, we are going to uh, implement an observed object that essentially observes the observable object of our view model. So I'm going to say at observed object var view model equals counter view model. And then here I will replace the count guy with my view model. Let's see, why is my autocomplete not working? There we go, dot count. And then here I will say view model dot increase count. So Super, super simple, right? We just press this button now and it's gonna increase our count, right? So this fully covers the relationship between observable and observed objects. So we can see here that 
we are observing this view model and we are paying attention to this count guy and it's a published property so that every time I hit this button, it calls this increase count function, it increases the count by one, and then it re-updates my view with the updated count variable. So that's the relationship between views and view models and how we use observed and observable objects. So now let's talk about when you would wanna use a state object versus an observed object and what the difference is between the two things. So you guys will notice that if I change my observed object to a state object, that absolutely nothing changes, right? So this really begs the question of what the heck is the difference between a state object and an observed object, and when do I wanna use one versus the other? So we're gonna do another example here to showcase clearly what the difference is between the two things and when you would wanna use one versus when you would wanna use the other. So what we are gonna do is create another view here and we're gonna make it pretty similar to this. It's just gonna generate a random number for us. And then we are gonna place this view inside of that view. So here's what I'm talking about. We're gonna make a, let's actually just go ahead and copy and paste this guy cause it's so similar. And we're gonna call this random number view. And we're gonna replace this state object with a state property. So I'm gonna say state private var random number equals zero. And I'm gonna replace this guy with my random number. And this is going to say random. And this will be generate random number. And for my action on this button, we are just gonna say uh, parenthesis zero up to 100. Uh, dot random element and force unwrap it. So this will just generate a random number for us between one and 100 guys. So, oh, we have to say random number equals zero to 100 dot random element. So that will just update the state property and then ultimately change it down here. So now really quickly, we need to just update our previews. So whatever you called this view, just go ahead and place it inside of the preview struct. And you guys will notice that if I resume my preview, I will now have this random number view in there and it will generate a random number for me, right? So pretty similar to what we have here, except here we're using a view model, right? To showcase the difference between state and observed objects, which we are about to see very, very clearly. So. Really quickly, I want us to replace the state object guy with an observed object. So this is gonna showcase the difference between the two things, guys. Get ready. So now what I want us to do is inside of this vStack, I wanna just embed it in another vStack and place my original view in there, state versus observed. I, that guy, the padding, just to get some spacing between the two things, cool. So. Here is the difference, guys. So let's increase the count by a couple things, and then let's generate a random number and pay attention to what happens to the count here. As soon as I generate a random number, it resets the count variable. So let's try to figure out why that's happening. So in our random number view, this random number guy is a state property. So every time this changes, it redraws the view. You guys should remember that from the state versus binding video. So. What happens is because this view, this guy right here, is contained within the body, every time this state property changes, it completely throws it all out, including the view model and recreates the view model and resets everything, right? So for example, guys, if I went and change this count variable to five, we'll notice that my count will say five and I can increment it a couple times and then if I generate a random number, it resets to the original value. Right, so that's probably not how you want that to function. There might be certain situations where that's what you want, um, but the difference between observed objects and state objects is that state objects will remain persistent and the view model will not get thrown away and recreate itself. So for example, if I go ahead and replace this with state object and let our preview refresh itself, it's working, it's working, it's working, and I increment my count a couple times and then generate a random number. You guys notice that it holds on to that count variable. So the difference between state objects and observed objects is this. 
observed objects get thrown away with the view and they get recreated along with the view itself. Every time this state property changes, it throws all this stuff away and recreates it with the updated state. But with the state object, it has persistence. So it remembers the original view model and all of the things about it, the current values that it had, whatever it may be, and it holds on to that stuff. So it remains persistent so that anytime a state property changes, it does not modify our, or recreate our view model. So to showcase that more clearly, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and add an init method here and just say print debug did init. And let's go ahead and just run our application really quickly. So just hit command R to run your project and make sure that you guys have the correct root view of your application. So make sure it's not this original view that you have here. You can just go to your app file and replace it with random number view right there. So let me bring the simulator over here and pay attention to the console here, guys. So you see did init. So we notice that our view model has initialized and every time I wanna increment my random number my view model does not reinitialize itself. Okay, so that's working nicely. Now let's change this back to an observed object, and I bet you guys are smart enough to guess what's gonna happen. What we should see is that every time we change the random number, it's going to give us back this print statement indicating to us that the view model has reinitialized. So I'm gonna go ahead and run my code here. And let's just pay attention to the console, guys. So increment my count. Everything is good. My view model is only initialized once. But if I generate a random number, it initializes again and again and again and again. So we can see here the fundamental difference between state and observed objects. State objects have persistence. Observed objects do not. Meaning that when the view redraws itself, a state object will remain persistent throughout the life cycle of the view. The observed object will not. It will get thrown away and recreated as the view does, as we saw in our example here. So the next question is, well, can you give me an example of when I would want to use one versus the other? You guys might be able to think of some on your own, but I'm going to give you another example to make this really clear of how you utilize state and observed objects together. So we are gonna create another view and we're gonna add it to our original view here. It's gonna act as sort of a child view of the original view. And I'm gonna give you guys a full breakdown of the view structure and hierarchy that we have here in just a little bit to make this more clear. For now, let's just go ahead and copy and paste this guy and create something called like child view. It doesn't matter what we call it. Um, and we are gonna delete this button, okay? And we're just gonna have this guy display the count times two or something like that. So we can just go ahead and go times two right there. So what we're gonna do here, guys, is pass along our view model. So I'm not gonna initialize our view model here. I'm going to simply pass it along. Counter view model. And then in my guy up here, I'm gonna embed this inside of another V stack. And go ahead and pass in my child view. And it's going to be our view model that we have up at the top. So we're initializing our view model here and we are passing it along to the child view. So let's go ahead and just refresh our preview really quickly. And we just we should see this showing up down here. Um, and we can maybe make this say like 2x count. Okay, and then if I increase the count, you guys will notice that this is always just the count times two. So in the current state, you guys might be able to guess what's gonna happen, right? So if I generate a random number, it will reset both of those things because it's recreating the view model every time a random number generates. So here's where it gets really cool. If I make this a state object and this is an observed object, well, you might think, okay, well, because this is an observed object, the 2x count guy will reset, but this won't. But that's actually not how it works. If I make it a state object and I then generate a random number, because one of these things is a state object, it will hold on to both of those things. So that is the core of how to use state and observed objects together. When you have this sort of parent-child view relationship, right? This could be considered our parent view and this is our child view you make the original 
instance of the view model a state object. And every time you want to pass an instance of that view model along to your child views, you can make those observed objects. In this state, you would not want to make this a state object because that is unnecessary. You don't want to pass or have state objects exist in child views. You could end up with retain cycles. So you can make these observed objects and the original instance of the view model is initialized as a state object and everything that is passed along to a child view can be initialized as an observed object and it won't get thrown away. What you don't want to do is initialize the original object of the view model as an observed object. You want the original one to be a state object and then every time you pass it along to a child view, you make those child view view model instances observed objects. So that's a really good example to showcase the differences in functionality between state and observed objects and when you would want to use one versus the other. Now to really clarify these concepts, I have a diagram breakdown of how exactly this stuff works in the example we just did. So let's go ahead and check this out. So we have a mock-up of the app that we just built to showcase the difference between these two things, right? So we could consider this our main view right here. This would be like the random number view and it's connected to some state property. So every time this state property changes, it redraws everything inside of this main view. So our child view one was the counter view, right? Where we initialized our state object view model. And then we had another child view, which was the times two view, the two X view, and we pass that along as an observed object. So this is the relationship that you want to have between your state and observed objects, guys. Just to cement this in your head one more time, state objects remain persistent throughout the life cycle of a view and observed objects do not. So that is gonna wrap it up for this video on state versus observed object, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and Please make sure you like and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this and check out my website at stephancodes.com for more exclusive and advanced material. Link is in the description. Thanks for watching this one, guys. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.